thank you very much for letting me join you on your Support Workforce Online Learning Week. My name is Maura Edwards and I'm a consultant at Dental Public Health and I work at Public Health Scotland. I'm here to tell you about what does good oral care look like and where to find information. I lead uh, the national programme Caring for Smiles. You can see the cover up in the top left hand side. This very much focuses on the day to day care for dependent older people. The programme also works very closely in partnership with NESS to train care and support staff. So the presentation today is about the importance of day to day oral care, brushing teeth, cleaning dentures. We're not going to talk about dental treatment as such, not mentioning fillings or extractions. I'm going to let you know about the National Oral Health Improvement Programmes that we and that will provide you with information if you're joining this session as a parent, a carer or as an individual who's interested in learning more about oral care for yourself, your family or just in general. The key point is that good day to day oral care can prevent dental decay and gum disease. So we have five national oral health improvement programmes and they cover from cradle to grave because we all have a mouth. I'm going to be telling you today about Child Smile, our programme for children, and then going to move to the other end of the age spectrum, Caring for Smiles for dependent older people, partly because that's where I spend a lot of my work time. But I will mention Open Wide, which is a newer programme, and that is for younger adults who might have additional care needs. I will just tell you in passing that we do actually have programmes for people who are homeless at Smile for Life and people who are in prison, that is Mouth Matters. And I don't really have time to cover them today, but I just did want to mention them in passing. Overall, the programmes offer training to support workers in hospitals, care homes, care at home and other social care settings which support vulnerable populations. Some of you might also be parents and some might be family carers. So how can we nurture good oral health for those we look after? So if you're a parent, hopefully you will know about Child Smile. It is widely available across Scotland and there are three elements. We have community and practice where the health visitors will refer on to our dental health support workers. We have toothbrushing programmes in all nurseries in Scotland and targeted schools in those schools where there are higher levels of dental disease. And we thirdly, we have a fluoride varnish programme, which again is targeted to those areas with higher levels of disease. And Child Smile has been really important in helping to improve the oral health of our children since it started in 2003. I'm going to show you a graph now from our National Dental Inspection Programme from the 2020 report. And you'll see that we've been recording the oral health of children since 1988. And between then and 2003, there was hardly any improvement in children's oral health. But you can see since 2003, when Child Smile began to be rolled out, there have been year on year improvements. And by 2020, almost three quarters of children starting school had no obvious decay. So that was a great success. Looking after the oral health of our children is really an important part of nurturing their development. And there's lots of really useful information on our website, childsmail.nhs.scot. And you'll find the key messages there about toothbrushing, spit, don't rinse, let the fluoride toothpaste work. Keep food and drinks containing sugar to meal times, mainly try to drink milk and tap water and register with a dentist and visit as advised. And in fact, these key messages are not just for children, they're for all adults. I'm going to move to the other end of the age spectrum now and talk a bit about Caring for Smiles, which we've done a lot of work with uh, carers and care homes, family carers. Those who are helping with the oral hygiene of those who can no longer look after their own mouths. And again, this is an important part of nurturing those that, that we're caring for. Good oral care is important because it helps to prevent dental disease and pain. It helps with eating and drinking. And it's important for quality of life and comfort, especially at those end of life stages. And we do this by helping to clean natural teeth, to help doing denture care and also looking after the skin inside the mouth or the soft tissues. It's really important that carers are trained to help those who need support with their daily oral care. And over the years, Caring for Smiles has trained thousands of carers, mainly in care homes, but also hospitals, care at home services and family carers. And this is arranged through our network of coordinators. They're based in the health boards in Scotland and there's a contact list 
on our TURAS page. You can see a screenshot of our TURAS page there. We offer a range of training opportunities from open badges right the way through to credit rated training, which gives something really tangible for those learners that are undertaking that. And it's important that we train our workforce and nurture their development. What happens if people become distressed during oral care? This can occur particularly if they have dementia of some sort and they just don't understand what's happening. And again, TURAS has information. We've got some video resources there. But there are some very simple techniques that can help. Communication, just simple explanations, mimicking what you're going to do, mimicking brushing, perhaps bringing the person's hand to their mouth or putting your hand over their hand, and then they will often help to brush together. And finally, if all else fails, sometimes rescuing helps and fresh face coming in a new carer can sometimes make the difference and perhaps the care can be undertaken then. Finally, I'm going to briefly mention open wide. It's not just older people who need help. They have younger adults with additional care needs who sometimes need support. And that could be a medical or a physical reason, perhaps learning disability, poor mental health. It's a very diverse group, but the same principles apply for oral care. We should need to prompt, we need to encourage and we need to support. And that's a bit of a continuum. So that has brought me to the end of my short presentation. It's a bit of a whistle stop tour of our oral health programmes, but I'm very happy for you to contact me if you would like any further information. Thank you. Mm -hmm.